Part 1. White Clouds. Verdant Rain Moon. Tower of Black Winds. The ceaseless rains that satiate the verdant landscape of Fodlin are accompanied by fierce winds and mighty roars of thunder. This abundance of rain, sparkling as it falls against beams of emerging sunlight, is a constant reminder to the people of Fodlin that nature is ever wild and unpredictable. For when the rain finally does take pause, the clouds part and give way to a glorious rainbow. I have a new mission for you, Professor. I would like for you to take your students into Kingdom territory to eliminate some thieves. They stole a hero's relic from House Gautier of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, the Lance of Ruin. Their leader's name is Miklan. He is apparently a disowned son of House Gautier. I believe it had something to do with his lack of a crest. Such happenings are fairly common within the kingdom. The Crestless cannot unleash the Goddess's power even if they possess a relic. Nonetheless, they are still capable of simply wielding those weapons. The hero's relics are immensely powerful weapons. We must meet this threat with adequate force. Unfortunately, most of the Knights of Seros are away from the monastery, purging the apostates of the Western Church. So we are entrusting you with this mission. After all, you wield the Sword of the Creator, which is more than capable of opposing any relic. The Sword of the Creator is a powerful weapon well beyond the other relics. You have nothing to fear. However, to ensure that no harm comes to the students, we will also send the Monastery's most skilled individuals to aid you. I must remind you that you are expected to conduct yourself in a manner befitting the wielder of that Holy Sword. Also, you should know that Professor Hanneman has been looking for you. That is all. Professor, I heard about our mission for this month. A thief with a hero's relic is worrisome, but with you at our side, I'm certain we can handle him. After all, you have the Sword of the Creator. It was allegedly wielded by Nemesis, the King of Liberation. If the legends are true, you hold the power to stand against entire armies. A band of thieves should be nothing. Even the most elite Imperial forces or the Knights of Saros could not hope to defeat you. Is that so? Even if those forces were to hurt someone precious to you? Can you say with full confidence that you would not turn your sword on them if that were to happen? You know, your power does not lie solely in the Sword of the Creator. You are stronger and more terrifying than you realize. Professor, when we leave the monastery, will you still think of yourself as my teacher? <sighs> Never mind. I'm being thoughtless with my words. For now, let's just focus on the problem at hand. Good of you to come, Professor. I've heard much about you lately. Specifically, that you are able to awaken the sword of the Creator's power. Thusly, it seems the true nature of your crest has been uncovered. I had, of course, seen your crest before. However, at first, I failed to recognize its true nature. Eventually, it dawned on me that what is visible is perhaps merely a small part of a greater whole. In other words, your crest is too significant to be detected when using normal instruments. After this discovery, I began researching crests that might fit that description, which allowed for a temporary hypothesis. However, I could not be certain. 
the crest my conclusions led me to was far too unusual. A crest thought to have disappeared from this world in the millennium since the fall of Nemesis, the King of Liberation. The crest of flames. That is what you possess. Your ability to wield the sword of the Creator has unequivocally proven my hypothesis. A legendary power, dormant since time immemorial and now resurrected. There can be no doubt that this ancient power resides within you. Well, hello, Professor. You came all the way to my room to... Oh. You've brought the materials from your lecture I slept through. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's rare for a nice professor like you to be so strict. Please, Professor, you must understand how difficult it is for me to fight the demon of drowsiness. Just talking about it makes me sleepy. It's not that I don't have enough motivation. The problem is that I don't have any at all. Not for useless things. I must compliment you, though. By this point in most conversations, I'm bored senseless. But I'm enjoying this. I wonder why. What is it about you that fascinates me so? You're definitely a strange one. In truth, your very nature is odd. You're definitely not a commoner, but you don't seem like a noble either. You're something else. And yet you can wield one of the hero's relics. You're like a hero in some silly legend. Or you could be a villain who came here to enact some evil plot. That wouldn't surprise me either. Hey, Professor, will you ever allow me to investigate that crest of yours? It won't hurt a bit, I swear. I'm sure I could find out all sorts of things about your crest. And you. Of course, I'm not as experienced with such research as Professor Hanneman, but I do what I can. Someday, I think I might like to become a Crest Scholar. You never know. Oh, don't trouble yourself. I didn't mean now. I've got a lot of other research I'm working on at the moment. I tend to start a project, get bored, and then leave it be. I might be ready to investigate your Crest soon. I'd have to tidy up a bit first. On that note... <sighs> Good night, Professor. Thank you. Ghost, perhaps? No, that is surely not the case. What is that look upon your face? I am no ghost, if that is what was on your mind. No. Uh, huh? Who's there? Professor, what are you doing here? Oh? Perhaps I was talking in my sleep. Ah, oh, so you heard me then. Yes, it was a nightmare. I've had them since I was a child. Stupid, pointless dreams I can't control. It's terribly frustrating. No, they're just worthless dreams of the past. Talking about it won't change a thing. I had a feeling you'd say that. I suppose I could try, but only if you swear not to tell a soul. 
I appreciate it. I dream of my older brother, paralyzed, helpless. My older sister crying for help that never came. The youngest babbling words beyond meaning. I see my family dying slowly, waiting in the darkest depths for a glimmer of light. I once had ten siblings, eight older and two younger. Such a large family, and yet I became the heir to the throne. Do you know why? Every last one of them was crippled by disease, or lost their mind, or died. I was the only one left who could inherit the throne. Things kept getting worse. The darkness kept getting darker. In the end, I was the only one who survived. The nightmares are a reminder to never forget, to never allow such terrible things to happen again. Even now, I'm the only one who can carry the weight of the Adrestian Empire. The future of the Empire, of everything, depends on me. Hmm. I shared more than I intended to. I suppose there's something in the air tonight. I've never told anyone about my past before. Please, forget I said anything. Sleep well, my teacher. Path to tread.
We'll do everything we can. Are you looking for something? You could say that. I'm looking for someone named Linhart who's been skipping lectures again. I see. Well, congratulations, you've found him. Did you want him for something in particular? What else could bring me here other than your complete negligence? Well, perhaps you're interested in hearing my latest theories on the nature of crests. I suspect the formation of crests may be quite different than that recorded in church tradition. Before you go on, is there any discernible benefit to me allowing this battle to continue? Well, of course. And that would be? I suspect you'll find the topic rather entertaining. That's it. What more do you need? Crest research is its own reward. You know, if you ever truly applied yourself, you could become a distinguished scholar. You could use your crest knowledge to benefit the world, or uncover new discoveries in magic theory. Why would I busy myself with such tedious work? I perform this research for my own knowledge. I'm not interested in the world at large. There's nothing wrong with a selfish drive for knowledge, but only if you put it to good use. I'm sure there must be some use. Oh? Then please. Tell me what potential uses you have in mind. Well, there are people out there who spend good money on bizarre artistic creations, so I'm sure my not-at-all-useful research could be used as a fine lullaby for the children of the world. A lullaby? <sighs> I have things to do. Just know that this was my last warning. Sure, of course. Goodbye. <sighs> Completely unreasonable. How will I see to this? Hubie, what are you doing here? A routine matter. No cause for concern. Ah, so it's something to do with AD then. And? She really is all you ever think about, isn't she? Look, I know you're doing all this so that she'll like you, but if you go too far, she'll end up pushing you away. Maybe even hate you. This has nothing to do with swaying Lady Edelgard's sentiments. I am simply her humble servant. I do what is in her best interest. Whether she cares for me or not is irrelevant. It really doesn't look that way to me. I bet you'd follow any order Aidy gave if you thought it would make her like you. Am I right? Any order? <laughs> what a thing to suggest. But the answer is no. I will decline any directive that I deem would not be beneficial to her. Is that right? So, just for example, if Aidy commanded you to find yourself a suitable wife, would you do it? If it would benefit her in some way for me to marry, then yes, I would marry. Mm, it's easy to say that now, with no bridal party in sight. But if it was the day of the wedding? Nah, I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe. My only wish is to see Lady Edelgard fulfill her ambitions. All other matters pale in comparison. Hubie, pale in comparison? You've seen too many operas. I don't think you understand how the world works. At all. And I don't care what you think, either. I would make any sacrifice to support Lady Edelgard. It's a shame you've never experienced such devotion. You're right. I don't have anyone like that right now. But maybe someday I will? Then maybe someday you'll understand. Until then, we will never see eye to eye. Now, if you will excuse me, I have much to do. Hubie, I don't get you. Although I do find your point of view just fascinating. <laughs>
looking pretty tired, Linhart. I think you could use a little more of the fighting spirit. I believe you have enough fighting spirit for the both of us. Enough? <laughs> There's no such thing! You need as much as you can get if you're gonna train. I'd rather pace myself. You're becoming too much like your father. I still recall with startling clarity the time he forced me to do some training. Ha! Ah, I remember your father wasn't too happy about that. Our father's actually got into a fight over it. They hate one another so much, I simply cannot fathom what's wrong with the two of them. I wish they'd just have it out already. One big fight to settle things. My father would win, obviously, but it would still be fun to watch. That would be rather cruel. I don't think anyone in Fotland could beat up your father. My father does have the height advantage, though. <laughs> height advantage? What does that matter? When two opponents are of similar strength, the one with the height advantage wins. It's pure math. Whoever forces the other to submit wins. That's how fighting works. It has nothing to do with height. Brute strength alone doesn't decide a fight. And taller people have longer limbs, too. Longer limbs equates to a longer reach. Taller people can hit you from farther away. Oh, and they have more leg strength. But there's also that... While I'm bored explaining this, I think you get my point. No, I don't get it. Now you're talking about limb length and reach? None of that matters when you're up close and brawling. You know, I'm going to agree with you just so I don't have to keep talking. If you've got something else to say, then come out and say it. Actually, no, forget this. I'll prove it to you myself. Some of those new knights look pretty tall. I'll fight one just for you. And off he goes. Uh, they're all so strong, I couldn't land a single blow. So it's as I said then, isn't it? The tallest fighter has the advantage. And my father could beat yours in a fight. yells, never says mean things about people, maybe she'd be my friend. Oh, there she is now. Okay, Bernie, you can do this. Bernadetta, are you needing help with something? <laughs> How did you know? Do you have eyes in the back of your head or something? I do not have that, no. Right. Um, can I ask you something? Do you want to... Um, maybe, uh, be friends or something? Maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't like me. I don't know what you think of me. What I am thinking? I am thinking that you remind me of Prey. What? Yes, like a rabbit in the tall grass. Always watching for enemies. And you flee at any sign of danger. You are quick also. I must be careful that I am not hunting Bernie when I take out my bow. Oh, you try not to shoot me. That's, um, nice. You have similarities with Prey. That is all I mean to be saying. S so you're saying you might end up hunting me? There is no need to have concern. I will make sure my arrows are not hitting you. Th that isn't comforting. You do not need forgiveness, but it is yours if you are wanting it. Was I saying something wrong? Petra, how are you doing? Getting used to life here? I am settled. Everyone shows great kindness. I'm glad to hear it. I was so surprised when you first arrived. A princess all the way from Bridget. You have my gratitude. But please do not call me princess. You are making my cheeks blush. There's nothing to blush about. You're every little girl's dream of what a princess should be. Anyhow, I suppose it's been a long time since you've been back to Bridget, hasn't it? I hope you aren't homesick. Maybe we can cook one of your favorite dishes from back home. I do wish for that. But there is no possibility. The ingredients are not found here. I suppose you're right. 
That's probably why they don't cook the food of Bridget in the dining hall. I'm sorry. I just got to thinking about how hard it must be to live somewhere so far away from home and... No, it can't be impossible. I'll fix you a real meal of Bridget. I'll just find a recipe and similar ingredients. Wait, Dorothea. It is the thinking that counts. But your cooking is... What is the word? Horrendous. That is what everyone is saying, anyway. Horrendous? Nobody's cooking can be that bad. The thinking is enough for me. You have my biggest gratitude. Fine, I'll do something instead of cooking for you. I just want to be sure that you feel at home here. How about a massage? That may help you loosen up. I have no problems. My body is already able to relax. Oh? Then perhaps I could sing you lullabies to help you sleep. I'm not having sleeping trouble. Just know that you never have to worry about putting me out. I like helping my friends. Well then, I must be going, but remember my offer. Dorothea is filling my heart full. <laughs> understand. Yet as I think of it, the pounding in my chest grows faster still. But is that me? Or is it you? Hmm. what happened with the right of rebirth. The infirmary. Well, it was a mess. Things are finally calm again. And so I've come here to unwind. Let me tell you, I put all of my knowledge to use keeping those kids alive. Still, the truth of it is that when someone faces death for the first time, well, they figure out who they are. They learn if they can do it again. We can't lose them, Professor. Not to battle or to cowardice. If you can keep them going, then I will too.
is that fish so still? Wait, is it swimming sideways? Perhaps, perhaps it is resigned to its woeful fate of being plucked from the water and eaten. Ah, oh, Professor, you are so outgoing with all of the students. I would like to have more opportunities to connect with you, though I am certain my brother would disapprove. Might you help me with a favor? Count on you. Hey there. Is this it? There you go. Come back anytime. Hey there. Is this it? There you go. Is this it? There you go. Is this it? There you go. Come back anytime. Professor? Please leave Sylvain alone for the time being. The thing is, the bandit's leader who stole the relic is Sylvain's disinherited older brother. Hi, Professor. Did you need something? I've actually got plans. <laughs> That's fine. I have a request. Hail, Professor. If I may introduce myself, I am Gilbert. My life has been spent as a dedicated knight. I am to accompany you on your assignment. I may have slowed a step in recent years, but I pledge to you the full extent of my abilities. No, Professor. 
The pleasure is all mine, I assure you. No, that... I have heard that someone from House Gautier, one of the Kingdom of Fargus's noble families, is causing some sort of commotion. <laughs> but a complete disgrace to the nobility. Hello? Professor. For a hero's relic to be stolen, it's unheard of. And just last month, the Sword of the Creator was almost stolen too. <laughs> also quite unheard of. What impudence. For House Gautier to invite us onto their land, they must be desperate. But at least we'll have the stalwart knights ready to stand around and watch us do all the work. liking that greatly you seem to dine with company often unlike me Need something? This one? You're all set. 
This one. You're all set. This one. You're all set. This one. You're all set. This one. You're all set. This one. You're all set. This one. You're all set. This one. You're all set. This one. You're all set. This one. You're all set. This one. You're all set. This one. This one. This one. You're all set. This one, this one. You're all set. See you again soon. Keep my voice down. Don't want people thinking I'm vying for attention. But how loud is too loud? Professor, let me sing for you. Do you not like my voice? It would make a Pegasus dance with joy. Seems simple enough. Practice yields results. be rather bewildered by the power that was hidden within. However, know that I believe in you. I have no doubt that you will use that power justly. You will most certainly fulfill the grand destiny that the goddess has seen fit to grant you. May I ask a favor of you? Professor, Geralt was looking for you. It seems he has gone off somewhere. If he is not in his room, then surely someone has seen him. Ask around. I have something to ask of you. I have something to ask of you. Progress. Hey you! Oh, Professor, are you looking for Captain Gerald? I just saw him in the Knight's Hall a little while ago. He was talking with a female knight, but I didn't get a good look at who she was. Hey, I hope we I know I'm in a different... Oh my, the 
crest of flames? Could it really? Yes, the actual crest of flames. <laughs> no, that is quite enough. I should compose myself. I must remain objective in my research. Objective, professional. <sighs> the scandal with the Western Church troubles me. We cannot afford to let ourselves be swept along, and yet... Hi. Don't you think Professor Hanneman's been acting a bit... strange? Maybe he's made some kind of big discovery. That's mine. Thank you so much. I've been looking everywhere. Sorry that the kingdom's unrest did not stop with Lord Lenato. Professor, the hero's relics are incredibly powerful. Please be on your guard. The Western Church, the Central Church. They believe in the same goddess, but oppose one another. Fodlin is a complicated place. Too, eh, Professor? Does that mean you're descended from nobility? You've certainly got the look for it. <laughs> I sure do wish there were more nobles like you, Professor. A teacher, a mercenary, and so very mysterious. How could a girl ever get enough? I'm sorry, but that's not mine. Swinging a sword about in the Holy Mausoleum? The potential for damage is too great to imagine. I sincerely hope the saints' coffins were not damaged. Were you using magic? I've heard you weren't, but... Ugh, it's torture not being able to go inside the Holy Mausoleum for an entire year. I'll gladly take this. Professor? Thank you. I appreciate your effort. relic was stolen. If this had something to do with a family conflict, I don't think I could choose a side. I think I'd be a pretty good judge of that. 
I know relics aren't easy to come by, but I'd still like to get my hands on one. For me, this is so great! Yes. This has been my first time to the Kingdom's North. I hear the people of North are cold and have much loneliness. Professor, I hear you have had work... Uh, have worked as a mercenary in the Kingdom. Did you find joy in this? You cannot remember? Is that having possibility? I have amazement. Oh, Gerald? He said something about visiting a grave. There's a graveyard attached to the monastery, so you'll probably find him there. I can't remember where the graveyard is, but I bet Sedith knows. Ah, the graveyard. Of course I know it. It can be a little hard to find. Would you like me to show you where it is? Very well. I wanted to ask you to join me, but I couldn't find you. So, here I am. I was thinking we should visit your mother. She's resting beneath this humble grave. Hmm? Oh, of course you would ask that. I wouldn't know where to begin. I suppose I haven't talked much about her. She was gentle and smart. Oh, so smart. A wonderful cook. Always kind to everyone. And she loved flowers. Whenever I brought her back an unusual flower, her face would light up. I cherish those memories. <laughs> I can't count how many times she made me happy just by smiling. And she smiled the most when she was pregnant with you. She died right after you were born. She wasn't able to spend much time with you. But she loved you with all her heart. That's the truest thing I know. Never forget it. This ring is the only keepsake I have of her. In time, it will be yours. One day, I hope you'll give this ring to someone you love as well as I love her. Well done. You have my thanks.
I still have... I won't forget all I've learned. I'm improving, thanks to you. I'm getting closer. I appreciate your... Right? How long will this take? How embarrassing. It is a not a oh. May I ask? Okay, that is a possibility. Working together works for me. Okay, let's give it a try. Look, Professor. I'm getting closer. Ah, it's clear to me now. I'd never have learned this back in my room. Thank you. 